All right, guys, so this is a tutorial on how to complete lab number 13, mineral composition of igneous rocks. Uh, so hopefully everyone's going to be following along with me. I added a couple things on here that you probably don't have. You don't have this red X. I'm just going to use this red X to show each uh, rock sample that we're looking at. And you do have this red marker here. And the red marker you can adjust the height of. And this will help us figure out the composition of each one of these rocks in the mineral compositions. So, uh, for example, let's start off with line AB. Now you'll notice line AB goes from the top of the chart, or the middle of the chart, let's say, down through the bottom. And it intersects with each of these mineral names. So, for example, rhyolite here contains potassium feldspar, quartz, Plagioclase feldspar, you can see how it's, the name is right here, and it goes out to here. Biotite, and then lastly, amphibole, small amount of amphibole. Now, it's not just for rhyolite, but also for granite. Granite has the same exact composition, all these minerals. So does pumice, so does obsidian. So today we're going to take a look at, um, I guess we'll call it granite and we'll see what the percentages are. So what you'll do is you'll grab this marker and you'll line it up with the top of potassium feldspar. You're gonna grab the bottom of the marker and you'll stretch it out so it reaches where the potassium feldspar area ends along line AB. Because right now we're looking at a very light colored piece of granite. How do I know it's light? Because it's all the way on the left. If I was looking at a piece of dunite, let's say, it would be all the way on the right. It would be very, very dark in color. Okay. So today, this is the one we're looking at. We marked off the top. We marked off the bottom. And then we can grab this piece, this marker, and we can bring it down the side so that the bottom of it, I'm going to zoom in, so that the bottom of it is touching the zero on the scale. And the top goes up to wherever it goes to. So here that would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, just past 60. So I'm going to call this one, just for sake of argument, I'm going to call this one 62%. So on the second page, you can see here we have mineral name. And for the line, this is line AB, potassium feldspar. So I'm going to call this 62%. Now, I might not be 100% accurate. I might be off by a little bit, and that's okay. We could always tweak these numbers at the end. Next, we're going to figure out the amount of quartz. That's within line AB. So let's go back to line AB. There is quartz. And quartz runs from here to here. So I'm going to take my marker. And I'm going to stretch it so it goes from the top of the quartz area to the bottom of the quartz area. And again, it's a bit of an estimate. You're not going to be perfect with it. And you might have to play with it so that it, it lines up pretty good. So here, I would say that's 0, 5, 10, 15. We're not quite all the way to the 20. So I'm going to call that 18. So we'll head back to here, and for quartz, we're looking at 18%. And again, I might change that. I might tweak these numbers. It might end up being 20. It might, be, might end up being 15. It's not exact. Don't worry about it. Next, we're looking at plagioclase feldspar. And I'm just going to shrink this down to fit. Maybe it's a little bit less than 10, but I'm going to round it up to 10. Seems to work for me. Plagioclase feldspar, we're going to call that 10%. Next, we're looking at biotite mica. It's even less. It's a little bit past 5. You can call it 6. I'm, I think I'm actually going to call it 7. I think the next one's going to be three. It's going to be one. I get it to add up to 100%. So there's biotite. And then lastly, we have amphibole. And 
And yeah, that's maybe about 3%. So we have a last two. Last two is pyroxene and olivine. You'll notice that pyroxene is over here and olivine is over here. They do not intersect with line AB. So that tells me both of these numbers will be zero. So let's add these up. We want to make sure that all the numbers we have here add up to 100. So that would be 62. That would be 72. 72 plus 8 is 80. 80 plus 10 is 90. 90 plus 7 is 97. 7 plus, uh, 97 plus 3 is 100. So this seems to work. And again, your numbers don't have to be exactly like mine. I might have been off a little bit. This might have been 65 and this might have been 15. I don't know. But as long as you're in the ballpark with them, you're good. Next up, let's figure out the density of line AB. So if we go back here, there's line AB. It runs from here to here, and you'll notice it's on the light side of color, the low side of density, and the felsic side of composition. In fact, it's very, very low density. I might just say very low density. The color is very light, so I might just say very light. And if you really want, you could even say very felsic, because felsic just means it contains a lot of aluminum, where Mafic means it contains a lot of iron and magnesium. So let's head back to the second page. Density, very low. I'm just going to shrink this a bit. Color, very light. Again, I'm just going to shrink that to fit. And composition, very felsic. And I'm just going to shrink it to fit. So we completed um, line AB. Um, I'm going to do line CD with you guys. If you feel confident, feel like you know what you're doing and you want to just get started, be my guest. You can go do that. Otherwise, uh, hang out with me. Let's do CD together. And then I'm just going to ask that you do EF, GH, IJ, and KL today this afternoon, this evening, and have that ready for tomorrow. We are going to be using this chart tomorrow, so I want to make sure everything's good and submitted. So let's head back. So you can call this in like a middle or a mid-grade um, granite. You can call this like a medium-grade rhyolite or pumice. I'm just going to call this one pumice doesn't matter again as long as it's directly above line CD. Let's grab our marker, bring it up here. Go from the bottom of potassium feldspar to the top of potassium feldspar and let's try and measure that out. You got from 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. So we're looking at about 20% for the potassium feldspar. Going to zoom in a bit. Next one, we're looking for quartz. We'll go from about there to about there. It's hard to line these things up sometimes, but I think that's good. That's 25, 30, 35, I don't know, 38 maybe? Let's try plagiocle salts far. Plagiocle seems to go from about there to about there. And that's what, 5, 10, 15, 20, I don't know, 23? Try and do biotite. Biotite runs from there to there. Let's 
biotite seems to be just short of 20. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, 10. I'm going to round that up to 10 for biotite. And amphibol seems to be about 10 as well. And just like before, we have zero for pyroxene, zero for olivine. And let's add these up, see if they add up to 100. 20 plus 38 would be 58, 68, 78. We got three here, that brings us to 81, 91, 101. So we got to adjust something. We might want to make this 137 or might make this one 22. I'll call this one 22%. Again, it's not 100% accurate, but you want to be ballpark correct with these. And then we're going to head down to the densities. This one you could say low. Color you could say light. And composition we could say felsic. All right, relatively simple. Try and wrap this up uh, today. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be hanging out on the chat for the next uh, 20 minutes. Otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow.